Hello everyone, this is Daniel, and I am going to be warning you about Halloween this year. And this is no prophecy. This is something that I warn you basically ahead of time, just so you don't do, don't watch horror movies or do anything this Halloween. Should have done it earlier. Didn't realize time was passing by fast, and um, basically, it's been happening since the beginning of Christianity. On and, and unfortunately. I have to go this far, so so stay with me. Halloween is Satan's favorite day. It is a day of the dead, and it's a day to, you know, sacrifice people. It's a day to sacrifice animals. Really, Halloween is basically where Satan says, "Okay, everyone must sacrifice all the people and animals, so that everyone." that is involved with it can go to hell and everyone that is sacrificed can go to hell and everyone will not it's it's basically Satan mocking God and saying, Okay, if you have your Christianity, then I will have my religion of death. So my point to make here is Satan made his religion called you know, it was it used to be called the Druids, and that was all about death, and Jesus is all about life. And Halloween celebrates death, it celebrates the glory of killing and dying and going to hell. It celebrates skeletons, which is death. It celebrates witches, which causes death. It celebrates devils, which is basically another form of death, which is the second death. It celebrates, you know, I would say candy is also a form of, you know, paraphernalia, which is basically some sort of pagan witchcraft which involves sexuality and even in Halloween you're having people without clothes and you're having people that are it's it's ugly you know and I know it sounds like I'm doing something but, but I'm just trying to spread the message so in Halloween and what the Druids would do is have a bonfire, which was actually called Bone Fire. What was going on there was literally people would um, end up burning people to bones in the fire, even babies. So let me get to this main point. Halloween is not supposed to be celebrated. And let's, let's just get to this one point that... Christians are celebrating it. They are using it for trunk or treat. They're using it for everything that is, you know, glory to them. But you know, if you celebrate Halloween and if you're a Christian and you do it in a church, which is basically God's temple, it's God's holy place. Not only us, but it's also our temple. We create the church to glorify God. However, now we're creating the church. To glorify God and the devil. So, you know, it's a crime to murder. It's a crime to kill. It's even a crime to rape. And everything that the that the everything that the Satan worshippers do is a crime. And now. Let me get to the final point of Halloween. People are still worshipping Halloween today, and it's getting more cult-like as it goes along in the movies. It used to be the, you know, murderous ways, but now it's getting to more of the detail murderous way, and it's, it's, it's horrible. I would say that, you know, instead of celebrating Christmas at the, at what, what, what Satan once says, Instead of celebrating Christmas, which is basically as Jesus, we, he celebrates Christmas as pagan, and he, we celebrate, you know, Halloween as pagan, and he wants people to stay away from God forever. And, excuse me, if people, if people, if, if it were, if basically if the end days were not shortened, then human flesh would not be saved. I bet you knew that part, didn't you? Human flesh. And that means human nature, which is which means 
really what the human's all about, which is basically all that, um, which is basically all the elements of human being. It's all about the fact that we're human, and Satan wants to take that away. So, you know, God's wrath is against us for that. So Halloween is really the start of paganism, and so is um, Christmas, and it's it's all horrible. Do you know which original day was um, considered holy, which was actually um, a holiday today? It's Easter, where Jesus was hung on the cross. What that really means is he took our sins and everything away from us. Jesus died on the cross so that our sins could be paid for. And that what that means is our sins are no longer in our lives. Which doesn't mean that it's in, in, no longer in our lives in the flesh. We have to die to the flesh. What does that mean? So, are you saying that I have to be holy? That's what you were saying anyway. You say, are, am I, are you saying that you have to be holy? My answer is no. Our flesh is corrupted by Satan since Adam and Eve. Our flesh has been corrupted. Even Noah had sin. Even all of his people around him had sin on the boat. All flesh is corrupted. However, that does not mean that we're to be sinners. That's also not true either. So that means we have to be in between. But that doesn't mean we have to be Lordship Salvationists either. Or does that mean, do we ha we mean that we have to be religious but have sin? Now, what is the very between? And why does it mean that we cannot say that we have to do as few, as few sins as possible? That does not glorify God because, you know what? We're all equal in sin. Even the Satanists are as equal as we are in the flesh. And did you know I was a Satanist one time before back when I was a teenager, and I was like, oh, Halloween's the, the, my favorite holiday. You know what my favorite holiday right now is? It's Easter. So, anyway. So my last, my final point of the video is, what did Jesus do on the cross? He said, Satan's work is no longer there. It's no longer, it's, it's done. If any of you were one Satanist, and I know that's like the few of you that escaped. I mean, let's let's just say that, um, oops, dear, excuse me, and let's just say that um, you are Satanist, but then decided to go to Jesus because you really wanted to be with him and forever be with him. All you have to do is accept him as your Lord and Savior, and you'll be accepted into heaven. What did Jesus do on the cross? Jesus accepted him to heaven. All of those that would choose him. So accept him as your Lord and Savior. And then you will be forever be saved. There's nothing you can do to lose that salvation either. Except if you re lose reward, that means you're a sinful flesh. But he sees nothing, you know, he sees none, none of, he, he sees nothing that is sinful inside of you. In your in your spirit, because he is he he's destroyed the flesh. What does that mean? If you die to the flesh, that means you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, which you are born again. Once you have a heart to be born again, that means your flesh, your body not the, not literally, but your flesh has died to sin. And you, your flesh is, it's like a court order. Like in court, you set you're basically all of your crime has been paid for, all of your expenses have been paid paid for. So in court order, your sins have been paid for. You no longer have that flesh with you that is corrupted. So once the flesh is done in your life today, then your spirit man will forever be with you. And once the spirit is forever with you, you're in heaven. So once you accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior, your spirit has been born. And once your spirit has been born, 
and you have comfort inside, and you have relationship with Jesus. Yeah. Basically, what that just means is when your spirit has been born, your flesh has been done away with. There's nothing else you can do to basically, um, you know, save your flesh. Because if you save your flesh, then you basically condemn your flesh and your spirit to hell. However, if you basically kill, like, if you lose your flesh, if you lose your flesh, then you save your soul into heaven. And what do I mean by that? Okay. If you don't get what I'm meaning, if I mean right now, all you have to do is accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you don't know what I mean by that, that's salvation. If you don't know what I mean by that, well, pray this prayer. Because Jesus answers all prayer. Even though he doesn't answer in the way you think it, he does, he, he basically answers all of your prayers in a way or a manner. Even though it's not answered in a certain time, it'll not be answered immediately, except for certain things. Like salvation, and wisdom, and even things that are, um, you know, wisdom, salvation, and preaching. Preaching is another one. But he'll just get give you the certain time, and you'll, you'll have to answer his prayer immediately when it comes to preaching. So anyway, my point is to tell you about um, how to how to learn about salvation is wisdom. If you don't know what I'm talking about, pray that you know what I'm talking about. And what do I mean by that? Pray that you know the entire Bible. Pray that you know the entire Bible, then you will know what I'm talking about. Because you obviously know what Halloween is all about, but you don't know what salvation is all about. Jesus will give you the answer. I know he will. So let me tell you again. Pray that he gives you wisdom of the whole entire Bible. That you, know, that you understand what the people that are born again are talking about. Because you don't want to know what the world's talking about anymore, do you? And once you know that wisdom, then you have the knowledge of sin. And once you, are, once you believe that Jesus signed the cross for all of your sins, and all you have to do is accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and then you will be forever be saved. That's it. That's all you have to do. Jesus is the Lord of God. I, uh, Jesus is a God of love, and Jesus is the kindest, most beautiful God that you ever have. He's more kind than anyone else, and everyone else even kinder than the, all of the angels. They're his warriors, they're his messengers, and they're his, they're his workers. But Jesus is so kind that the messengers, they, they, they just follow his message. They just give everyone the, his message and that's all they can do. Because Jesus is so kind that he would save all souls that come to him. He gives us an option to not want to be with him, or to be with him. To be with Satan, or to be with Jesus. Satan is the most hateful creation that Jesus has ever seen. He's so hateful and proud that he will spit on Jesus, Jesus' word and all that, by mocking his word, and he's just hate, he kills. Remember, what I said in the video is that Satan is all death. He's only about death. And it's only focus on death. If you only focus on death and killing and murder and stealing and destroying and lying, then what's love? Jesus is the opposite of that. He is holy. He is good. He is loving. He is gentle. He is all the fruits of the Spirit. And by the way, my last point is, all the fruits of the Spirit are legal. Nothing is nothing breaks the law of the of the um, 
Nothing's ever going to break the law of, the, of love and of joy, which is, you know, faithfulness and, you know, love, joy, peace, and fa faithfulness. And um, basically even things like gentleness and, fa fa yeah, gentleness, faithfulness, and um, meekness, which is humble and humility. And all that above, like self-control and kindness, all that, there's no law against it. Matter of fact, Jesus is the one that made the law in the Old Testament, which is all good and holy. However, the law points out sin. But even then, Jesus made new commandments in the New Testament that all points out to the Old Commandments once you do the new commandments it's just I mean you don't have to do new commandments it's just evidence that you're saved and the evidence that you're saved is you love one another you try to help one another and you try to it's like you're trying to preach one another you're trying to help God save souls and what else is cool about that Jesus cares about you. And if you're suffering right now, and especially in Hall Halloween, He's going to be there and comfort. He's going to be there and, and He will comfort you. If you want answers, then pray for God for answers. For all the answers of the Bible. He's going to be there for you no matter what. If you're suffering, He will comfort you. And that's probably the third thing is He's going to comfort you. So He's going to be there for... Um, salvation and then basically um, comfort and the next thing is not a wisdom and knowledge because he's our comforter remember that it doesn't have to be an audible prayer it doesn't have to be in thought that is like audible thought all you have to do is m like murmur in your thoughts and just think about what do I do now and he will comfort you. It's going to be the most beautiful feeling that you will ever have by comfort. His comfort is supreme and beyond our imagination. Just remember, Jesus comforts all those that come to him. But those that are rebelling and hurting other people's lives, mentally and physically, all he wants them to do is come to him. And he will destroy sin. Remember that. And remember, Jesus loves you. And I care for you, okay? Alright, I'll be done now, okay?